So hi, welcome to another episode of Dose of Pharma. I'm Jessica. And I'm Lucas. And today's topic is we're going to talk to another inspiring alumni, another person who started with the same tools in the same position as us in the pharmaceutical science course. And we're going to discuss how they utilize these to get to where they are today. We explore what it's like working in the cosmetic industry, one of the exciting pathways this degree can lead us to. And we discuss the transition from university to working life. So today's guest is Georgie Percival, who is a recent graduate from our own pharmaceutical science course. And she took a placement back in 2020 at Milkman Grooming Co. And now she is actually moved to Queensland, who's undertaken taking as the new product development scientist. She describes herself as a methodical person who approaches tasks in a systematic and organized manner. And she loves working in the lab and working towards a final product, as well as the process of going from an idea to product onto the market. Hi, Georgie. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you going? Very well, thank you. So to start off our interview with you, we'd like to ask you, what was your favourite part of doing the farm side course? Um, I probably have to say labs. This is a bit controversial. <laughs> a lot of my friends hated labs, but I definitely really enjoyed them. I think um, the hands-on aspect of it was really great. Um, getting to experience all like the different things you can do, like the med chem side of things and cosmetics, although we didn't get to do too much of that because of COVID. <laughs> we missed all those labs. Um, it was definitely a lot of fun, I think. Also, um, the campus... Um, was amazing as you guys were saying before um, it's such a tight-knit community because it's so small you get to know pretty much everyone in your course which is really nice it's an experience you don't really get at Clayton um, so yeah I really enjoyed that as well yeah I definitely like like the tight-knit community yeah it's really nice so I don't know how I feel about labs but in between they always feel <laughs> like they're going wrong but I still kind of enjoy yeah. them yeah that's very true you get to the end and you're like did we make what we need to make <laughs> no but that's all right so yeah. yeah it's a good bonding session after four hours yeah definitely four hours is a long time to be with the same people every week as well but it's nice to get to know people really well um so leading off to that what was your experience during the final studies in your course as it was like impacted by COVID as well yeah, I found it actually really difficult. Um, I didn't, like, at the start, I was like, this is amazing. I don't have to drive, train, and then tram to uni. Like, it's going to be great. I could just do it from home. But then as I got further into it, I was like, this kind of, this is difficult. Like, not having that one-on-one -on -one with, like, teachers and um, other students, you don't get that social aspect as much. And, um it's harder to ask questions of your teachers. Like you've got to actually email them and everything, but like I made it work um, and it was fine in the end, but obviously it was challenging. It was very different. Um, I probably wouldn't do an online course again <laughs> if I had the opportunity, but Monash handled it really well. Um, they had like everything organized, like when we had to go into lockdown. I remember going into class that day and um, Laurence was like, everyone, class has been cancelled for the rest of the semester. Um, and so they were really like straight onto it and knew what to do. But um, yeah, it was difficult. Yeah, for sure. Because like I remember when I was studying last year, I had to like really depend on myself to like get my study up because no one was like interacting with me to make sure like I'm keeping yeah. track of my assignments and all that. Yeah, definitely. I think that was a bit difficult as well and then I was actually lucky um because it was online I could go to work every day and my boss is really um flexible so I could go to work and I'd be like oh, I've just got a class I've got to go and I'd sit at my computer and do my hour of class and then I go back to work so I was good in that aspect I enjoyed that yeah um, so great. yeah that was nice 
Yeah, oh, definitely he's got his advantages, but lots of disadvantages. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I still miss like the social side because we're still not on back on campus as much as we were. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's just you like guys mentally. Just have, like, workshops and labs on, you don't have like, um, God, what are they called? Lectures? You no. don't have them. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah, that is tough still. So how did this affect like your placement opportunities having to go through COVID while in your third year? So placements were really limited last year. I'm sure anyone from my year can tell you like they didn't exist, um, especially in where I was interested in doing my placement. Um, so I had a bit of an interesting placement experience because I already worked for a cosmetic company. I um I knew that I wanted to do cosmetics. I wasn't really interested in doing the pharmaceutical like drug um, placements or like paints with Dulux. Um, so I went to Laurence and I was like, my boss is willing to take me for placement. Is that okay? Like, can I do that? And she was, she was over the moon. So I was really happy with that. Like found my own placement. So it worked out really well. And I think it benefited a lot of us because it actually made us email companies so I know a couple of people in my year were emailing companies being like do you have any placement positions because our the companies we had relationships with just weren't offering them so I think it was good in that respect so yeah I was actually quite lucky with how it worked out I got a like a external placement where I know as a lot of people didn't get to do an external placement because there were there were so few so were you able to like go to the company physically during the placement period Yep. So I was there every day. So I was there for four weeks, nine to five. Um, yeah. So I was really lucky. I know some people had to do remote placements. I wasn't too keen on that. Um, yeah. yeah. I really wanted to be like in person kind of doing the nitty gritty in the lab kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Well, so, the yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> you can go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to ask. So was this like at Milkman? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was at Milkman. Yeah. 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 What are you so, going to say, Lucas? Um, yeah, so leading on to that, what, what was the experience like? Because, like, being a student full-time is completely different to a working full-time adult. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, I had actually a really interesting <laughs> experience with placement. It was very challenging because our placement times got moved because no one could do their placement in the, like, a lot of time except for a few of us I had to do uni at the same time as I was doing my placement so it was difficult I would go to work or go to my placement nine to five and then I'd come home and be like I gotta do uni so it was very full-on I was juggling a lot of balls um but yeah it was good but very very different I mean like at uni you've got kind of a taste of every little different thing like medcam ddb formulation and i was pretty much just full-on formulation for my placement and so yeah it's very different you're very in the one area so that's probably my experience of what i took from that is it's very narrow it's much more narrow than you you're learning i guess or from my experience were you able to like rely on the knowledge and skill sets you developed through like studying at uni or, or was it like a big learning curve between university and doing the placement? It was a bit of both. So because I think the degree is very um, fun, like pharmaceuticals focused, it's not very cosmetic based or I hadn't gotten to that part of the course yet. So I had like surfactant knowledge and that was like, I was kind of thrown in the deep end pretty much. Um, I had to design a body wash, hair, shampoo and conditioner. So like a three-in-one product. And basically all I knew was like surfactants and how to thicken surfactants with salt. So it was a learning curve, but I had knowledge at, like at the same time. But then again, like everything I have done so far, like I've had knowledge from my uni degree but then I've had to kind of expand on that I think because of where it's a small company like I pretty much and along with my boss we formulate everything um, together so it's not a huge team that does like different things like you might have in like a bigger company you might have like a team doing emulsions a team doing soaps a team doing cleansers or whatever we do everything ourselves so you kind of have to learn a lot about 
very different areas of cosmetic formulation, I guess. So how did you like branch out and develop yourself in a sense? Were, were there like any resources that was like really helped to you? I do a lot of research. So when I sit down and I'm formulating a product, I research like say we'll have a meeting and we'll be like, what do we want in the product? Do we want it to be all natural, like no petroleum, vegan, et cetera, et cetera. So I do a lot of research about like ingredients um, in that sense. So I found that working in this job, I've learned a whole lot of stuff about ingredients that I wouldn't have known at uni. So you could ask me like, what does this effect and do? And I could probably be like, yada 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 so I think kind of being thrown in the deep end has made me learn all that stuff and develop my knowledge a lot more so than I would have at uni because we just didn't get that opportunity to kind of expand on that you know it's kind of like I said you do this prac and you do this 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 and this um it's a lot of trial and error as well working out what works and what doesn't I mean today I was developing something and we tried one way of mixing it and it didn't work so then we tried another and that worked and finally I think it's done so we've got to send that off I've tried this product so many times and that like so many mistakes but it makes you realize like okay that doesn't work let's move on to the next thing so I think yeah trial and error research I think that's pretty much where I've been kind of focusing my development on um I also do a couple of courses so I've done some courses with um special cam on um certain things that we're looking to formulate so for example like using natural preservatives so learning about that um they have awesome resources on there um AS C um is also really good so yeah kind of connecting with people on LinkedIn as well um, that are in the field. So um, Belinda Carley, who's like, I think Institute of Personal Cosmetics or something. She posts a lot of stuff about formulating cosmetics, which is really helpful as well. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you very much for sharing. <laughs> no worries. What product have you developed that you're most proud of? <sighs> So at the moment, there's only, I've only got one product on the market at the moment because we've had such a backlog of um, stuff going on with Christmas and stuff. It's very busy. Um, but I've worked on a few that are coming out, which are pretty awesome. Um, so probably, oh God, there's a really cool one coming out. So um, last year in my placement, I did body wash, um, shampoo and conditioner, so that was a whiskey and dry fragrance. And we've recently just started working on a gin and tonic fragrance, which is pretty cool. Um, where we're like collabing with a distillery up north um, of Queensland and they're providing us with their gin heads. So it's the stuff that would normally go to waste and we will like, we can make that into a fragrance. So we've used that to make it into a fragrance, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so I haven't cool. seen anyone do that yet. I've definitely seen it with beer and using hops, but I haven't seen anyone do it with gin. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that. And then maybe I'm working on a hair clay at the moment, which has been very difficult, which finally coming together, we're doing a trial batch next week of it. And it works amazingly. Like, I'm really proud of that. So probably those two products, I think the coolest things I've done so far which are a little bit different oh that must be so exciting to be a part of that yeah, yeah definitely it's really exciting when you see like I remember the first order when someone ordered whiskey and dry I was just like elated and then every time you get a review on like our online store I'm just like yes. so yeah it's really exciting to see people enjoying your products and really loving them and then coming back and buying them again so yeah, that's definitely wonderful because like it's kind of like um, a whole process where like you go into making it, developing it and then actually marketing it. And it's like a cycle that renews again and again, but it's just a different experience every time. Yeah, for sure. It's really exciting being in a small company. You get to see from beginning to end. So like the design of the bottles, um, if, it, if it's a sticker, you get to help design that, like what goes into it, the photos we take. So I don't know if you've seen our Instagram, like there's photos on there. Yeah. It's like the body wash and there's bubbles and I'm in the background, like 
off screen, like blowing the bubbles, like wow. everything you get to do. <laughs> I get to be a part of everything. So it's really fun. Yeah. More than just a pharmacist, like a cosmetic scientist, you get to go yeah. into all like the marketing and stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. I wear many different hats in my job. So it's really good. I'm not sure if we discussed this previously, but like how, well, what made you going into Milkman Grooming Co initially and how was your experience throughout the years? So this, I have a very interesting pathway into Milkman. So during COVID um, lockdown, out just as we got out of lockdown, um, I was on a, a babysitting platform and my boss contacted me and was like, can you look after my kids? So I was like, yeah, I'll look after your kids. So I looked after them and they told me what they did and I told them what I did. And it was kind of, it just worked. And I had to build up the courage to ask them if they would have me for an internship. And so I went home and I was like, I've got to ask them. I had to like work up the courage and I went and asked them and they're like, yeah, for sure. And they ended up hiring me. So I was really lucky. So I was only casual last year because of uni. And then it got to a point last year where there were just no jobs in what I wanted to do. So I was like, I was in a bit of a panic and then they offered me a job doing exactly what I wanted to do. So like research and development. And I was like, I can't, I can't say no. And then the added bonus of moving wow. interstate as well to the Sunshine Coast was just like, this is going to be an adventure. We can't travel. So why not? So yeah. that was pretty much my pathway into Milkman. Um, but I didn't realize this is crazy. I didn't realize, but when I went into the degree, I didn't understand how broad like pharmaceutical science was. I thought it was like going into drug design and I didn't realize you could do all these things like food and paint and chemicals, colors, flavors, fragrances, like the list goes on and on as I'm sure you guys know. Um, so I didn't realize cosmetics was a thing. And then I got to my final year and I was like, that's what I want to do. The whole time I was like thinking I want to design vaccines. And, uh, and then I got to, um, my third year and I was like, nah, cosmetics. So yeah, it's a bit of a journey for me an interesting one, but yeah, definitely worthwhile realizing what I wanted to do and how much I actually enjoy it. So oh, that's amazing. At least you, you were able to discover what you truly are passionate about. <laughs> We're still yeah, like for sure. in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You got plenty of time. You guys can try heaps of different things and you get the labs at the end of the year or well, hours are at the end of the year when you get to do all the different things like make a tablet. Have you guys already done that? Yeah. You've already done that. Okay. So you probably kind of have an inkling of where you want to go or what you enjoyed most. So I think follow those inklings and you'll kind of come up to something that you will enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like it was really meant to be with your career path. It all just fell into place <laughs> really well. Yeah, it literally just fell into my job. So it must lucky. have been still stressful at the time, though, before everything works out. It was so stressful. I can't yeah. tell you. I was on like seek and all those like grad things every day looking for jobs and nothing was coming up. And then now that I'm in my job, everything's and like the country's pretty much working as normal. Um, everything started coming up and I was like, oh my gosh, like everything's available now, but I'm super happy with where I am and I wouldn't change how it went. So what does like a typical day as like in your job look like? It really depends on the week. So at the start of the month, we have shaver shop orders. So that is the most hectic period of the month. And it just happens every month. So it's like, crazy production or like formulation. So on a typical day I might get to work and then make a product. So I could, so today, for example, I did beard bums. So that involves me popping all the ingredients into this big like wax melter, like it's used for candles and then melting that and then pouring that. So we've got this like hose, like a heated hose that you like squirt. It's kind of like a petrol pump and you like pump, wax into tins and then I'll go upstairs and I've um, got my own little lab up there so do formulations so today I was formulating a product for somebody else who um, is a friend and wants a certain product made so that's what I did today and finally hope fingers crossed they love it because I love it and I'd use it 
Um, so yeah, a bit of that. Um, sometimes it'll be a little bit of marketing. So taking photos. So we have Fridays, it's photography Fridays. So we could be f featuring like a certain ingredient in one of the products. So avocado oil or coconut oil. So we'll get like a coconut and pop the product in there and take a photo of it. Um, what else is there? I do a bit of online stuff. So a bit of admin bit of everything to be honest um I have a very very day we try and get three big things done done a day so whether it's two production things and a formulation thing or a production thing a computer um activity not a computer activity but like an admin activity and formulation so yeah my days are very varied which I really enjoy it's not just the one like formulation one product every day so because it just gets you get clogged up if you're doing the same product every single day, all day. So it kind of, it helps you think outside the box more. So if you're doing different things, well, at least I find that for myself. Yeah. It's pretty amazing how you get in touch with so many different types of products as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really great. It's enjoyable to see the different processes for different products, like how you test them and make sure that they work all like work well the ph is right is it thick enough you get to do a lot of different things so yeah, yeah it must really help develop like a really wide skill set but it also keeps it very interesting yeah for sure definitely i would never have thought i remember making the body wash last year going there's no way I can do this. Like, this is impossible. And now I'm just like throwing body wash together. Like it's so simple and um, it's like emulsions. I'm like, yeah, this is good. Like HLB, I know this. So it's very different. It's a big change in mindset to what I was last year and a big change in skills and what I've learned. It's crazy in a year. How, how were you able to transition well into your workplace you said it was kind of like different but like similar in a way I guess having the knowledge from uni and kind of being able to look back on that and use that as well as using new knowledge it kind of paired really nicely together um, from what I had learned and then alongside that I had like a really a good relationship with the team already because I looked after their kids. So it was really nice to be able to see a different side to like what they did as well and see like everyone's different roles in the company and how they work together and where I would fit into that. So I guess that <laughs> is kind of how I transitioned, like pairing different knowledges and then forming great relationships really helped. Um, with that and then moving into state as well was a huge change but again they were a massive support um my bosses Ben and Jackie so they really helped me with that and feel settled and welcome and yeah <laughs> sorry that was an awful answer <laughs> it's okay it was it was really insightful and like you mentioned like communication was really important right and yeah. I think yeah it is quite relevant, especially in like farm side, we tend to work in teams during the labs as well. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's, it's interesting not working as much in a team where I'm at the moment because we are like smaller. I, it's pretty much, I rely on one or two other people. Whereas like at uni, you're relying on a whole group of people. Like for example, if you've got a group project and I need results from five other groups. I'm reply, relying on all of those other groups to do their work. Whereas at Milkman, I rely on one or two other people and it's very different, but I think it's nice to be smaller because you get things done and you're very in tune with each other because, because of that, because you work with each other every day. Like it's normally like the three of us at work every day and we work really well together, which is really nice. Yeah, that's better than like how we're always waiting for other groups to post their results. Yeah. So like, and then someone doesn't. Done... <laughs> <laughs> is there any yeah. like what challenges and what advantages are there to working with your like the small team? Challenges are it's very busy. Like I'm constantly doing something, testing something. There's not really that much 
downtime but I guess like that comes with being working for someone you don't get to sit there and do nothing but I mean like it's 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 very full on but advantages are I get to definitely see the business as a whole more so if I worked at a larger company like I'm kind of in my little area my little formulation area or my little this area I get to do little bits and pieces of everything which is really nice um yeah I've learned a lot about how to run a business and random things I wouldn't have learned working for a larger company so I think it's really beneficial to kind of start off small and see like how the cogs turn rather than being thrown into a big company and only being that one small person in that company and then there's a hundred million different people and everyone's doing their own thing whereas I cross over and do all different things which I think is definitely an awesome advantage yeah there's two sides of everything as well but it's very interesting to hear like how small companies are very cohesive and Mm -hmm. even though you show the more responsibilities it's much more exciting as well yeah definitely and it's so exciting when you realize like oh my god three of us have done that like look at that three people have put that on the market and it's now selling it's crazy when you think like massive companies they probably like spew out a hundred different products a month or whatever and like kudos to them but like one product for us is like oh my gosh this is so exciting yeah it's such a good sense of achievement yeah for sure definitely it feels really good to get something done like I'm so excited when those bottles arrived for the gin and tonic this week I got I was like walking around with this bottle like oh my god it's so did you try it um I haven't drunk it do you mean like drinking it yeah or trying (laughs) I haven't I've tried it but no I can't drink the head but I think you can drink that I think you might die I'm not sure I think it's got something with the alcohol content it's either too high or too low but um I have tried the gin and it is delicious so can confirm it's good wow looking forward to the product yeah Yeah, it smells awesome I really like it it's very it's very different to the whiskey and dry it's a more refreshing smell which I really think like works with being clean so oh that must be so cool I know like when we do our labs and like we make it like the tablets at the end of the labs and even though it wasn't like a proper product it was still like oh I made this yeah yeah yeah. and then to actually have a product on the market must be like amazing yeah it's really cool I love like I constantly bring things home I live in a share house so I'll bring like a body wash home I'll be like everyone everyone try tell me what you think and they'll be like you need to change this or this or this or sometimes I'll be like yeah it smells awesome so that's really good to get feedback from all your friends so yeah. it's nice so you sold me I'll probably go buy some products after this episode <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. smell good whiskey and dry smells good so Jessica um because of the time, do we want to wrap up with the last question? Yeah, I think it's time to like conclude with the last question. No worries. <laughs> so, um, Georgie, as a graduate from our mm-hmm. course, do you have any yeah. advices for the current students studying at Parkville? In general or for cosmetics? Uh, I guess more into cosmetic industry as you know more about it. Cosmetics is very different to pharmaceuticals. So if you're looking to go into cosmetics, be prepared for a very fast paced environment Um, because because cosmetics can go to the shelf so quickly compared to pharmaceuticals, it's everything can change in a split second. So some trend can come on the market. So for example, like past trends are like the charcoal trend. I don't know if you guys remember um, the coffee, scrub trend natural um, ingredients so you need to be able to um, adapt very quickly in um, a cosmetic um, industry you also need a very strong attention to detail so you want to focus on like if something's slightly wrong it's it's not going to cut it you need to make sure that it's perfect or as close to perfect as anything can be be ready for fast pace, be adaptable and have strong attention to detail and passionate. I Passionate. <laughs> Definitely you have to be passionate. Um, like you want to live your product and live it and love it. Um, and then, yeah, that's probably my advice is definitely just get into it. Enjoy it. You need, yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> 
that's definitely something we can take into our going into our placement interviews that are gonna yeah. be like soon. For because, sure, like, definitely. I can definitely say that you guys in you. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love my job. I really enjoy what I do and I didn't think this is where I would be. Like I didn't picture myself in a cosmetics company. I didn't picture myself living in Queensland. So two things I never expected and have just worked out really, really well for me. And I've really enjoyed like the ride that I've been on with Milkman. Um, so yeah, great. Thank you very much, Shorty. No worries. Yeah, it's been awesome talking to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys too. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your uni. And Thank you. Double degree and honours. Yeah. Better than I am. <laughs> I was done after three years of uni. That's <laughs> so okay. <laughs> glad you finally graduated. Yeah. So I'm sure you guys will be there soon enough and you'll work out what you guys want to do and I'm sure you'll love it. So. Yeah, it was great having conversation with you. It was very insightful about like your experiences as well as the cosmetic industry in general as well. So thank you awesome. for that. Yeah, it no helps a lot talking so to welcome. someone who's been through like the same thing and it like yeah. went yeah. through it, came out on the other side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wish we had this when I was in um, when I was doing my degree because there was nothing like this. I didn't like know anything about cosmetics or, or like what it was like to be in um, industry. All we had was employability intensive. So like kudos to you guys for doing this. It's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. To conclude the episode, we wish to acknowledge the people of the Kulon nations on whose land we are gathered today. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. For those listening who may be based elsewhere, we pay our respects to the traditional owners of the land from wherever you may be listening from. We especially welcome any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people listening in today.